In this video, we're going to be looking at factorizing quadratic functions. A quadratic function is a polynomial involving variables of powers up to two, so x squared, x's, and constants. So for example, we have a quadratic here, x squared plus 5x plus 6. And in this video, we're going to be looking at factorizing them directly. So we want to write this quadratic as the product of two linear factors. So we want to write it as two brackets involving x's multiplied by each other. First step is to look at the coefficient of the x squared term. And since there's no number here, we can just think of this as having a one multiplied by the x squared. So then we need to think about what two numbers are gonna to multiply to give us one. And that's just one and one. So first step is to write x and x because when we multiply these two terms out, we're gonna get an x squared. So we're halfway there and we just need to figure out what numbers go here. So we need two numbers that multiply together to get six and add together to get five. So we can write six as one times six or two times three or three times two or one times six, but that's just rearranging. And then we can work out what five is as the sum of two numbers that we can write one plus four or two plus three or three plus two or four plus one. Again, just swapping the numbers. So now we're looking for two numbers that line up in both these equations and we can see that two and three uh, fit the bill. So if we put plus two and plus three, then we can check this is right by multiplying out. We're gonna get two times three that's gonna give us a six, and then two x plus three x, that's five x, so this is the factorized form. So now let's look at a bit of a harder example. Let's do three x squared plus 10 x minus eight. So now we've got a coefficient in front of the x squared term that isn't one. This means we need to factorize the three into these two brackets as the first step. So if we write the two brackets out first, then we need to write three as the product of two numbers. And luckily, since three is a prime number, we can only do this in one way, three times one. So first step is to write three x and x. And you can see that when we multiply these two terms out, we are gonna get three x squared. So now we just need to work out what two numbers go here to give us the rest of this expression. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to get minus eight. So firstly, let's think about how we can do that. We can write minus eight as minus one times eight, or minus two times four, or we can do two times minus four if we just move the minus sign, and we can have one times minus eight. So these are the only two combinations um, up to swapping the minus sign. And now we need to plug in these numbers and see which one gives us the x term. So if we just do this by trial and error, let's try minus one and plus eight. So what's this gonna give us if we multiply the brackets out? We're gonna get minus one times eight. This is gonna give us minus eight. We've already got the three x squared. So let's just check if we get 10 x, we'll have minus one times x and eight times three. So that's 24 minus one. That gives us 23 x, which isn't what we want. We want 10 x. So let's try another combination. How about minus two and plus four. If we multiply this out, we'll get three x times four, which is 12, and minus two times x, which is minus two. So 12 minus two, that equals 10 x. So this is the factorized form that we want. So let's do one final example. This is gonna be the hardest one. We'll do six x squared minus five x minus six. So lots of minuses, lots of composite numbers, we need to try and factorize this as the product of two linear factors. So six isn't prime, which means we can write it in multiple ways. We can write six as one times six or two times three. So now we've got two possible ways of factorizing this. So we just have to do it by trial and error really. So let's plug in six X and X. That's one way we can write six X squared. And now we need to think about numbers that satisfy the rest of the equation. So we need two numbers that multiply together to get minus six. And how can we do that? We can do 
minus two times three or minus one times six. And again, we can swap where the minus one goes. We can do minus one, uh, one times minus six or two times minus three. So let's try these combinations out, see if any of these work. Um, let's start with minus two and plus three. If we do minus two x plus three x, 18 x minus two, um, that's 16 x. So that's not gonna give us the minus five x we want. How about if we do minus one plus six? Well, then we're gonna get 36 x minus one, which is 35 x, so that's way too big. We actually need a negative value of x. So what if we try the minus sign on this side and the plus side on this side? So we can do minus two plus three, then we'll get minus 12 x, six x times minus two minus 12 x plus three x, that gives us minus 9x, so a bit closer, but not what we want. Final thing we haven't tried is minus 6 and plus 1, uh, minus 36 plus 1x, minus 35x, that isn't really going to give us what we want. So I think we can see from this that writing 6x at times x isn't going to give us the right solution. So let's instead right 2x times 3x so this is the second way we can write 6x squared and this will multiply out to give us the x squared term so now let's try a few of these combinations to see if we can get the 5x here so how about we do minus 2 here and plus 3 what are we going to get we're going to get 3 times 3x which gives us 9x squared 2x times minus 2 gives us minus 4 so we'll actually get plus 5x, so we've got the five, we just need the minus five. So what if we change the signs here? If we instead write minus three and plus two. So this time we'd get minus nine x plus four x. So just double check, minus five at nine x plus four x does equal minus five x. So this is the factorized form of this quadratic. And there you go.